Good evening, and welcome again to True Light Christian Ministries at our Bible class. We are so excited that you've come and joined us for another uh, rendezvous with uh, God's Word. And, uh, you know, His Word is a, is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. And so we are excited always when we are able to go and, and get in His Word. Um, as is our custom, we do I'm Special, so we'll start that on today. I'm special in all the world. There is nobody like me. Since the beginning of time, there has never been another person like me. Nobody has my smile. Nobody has my eyes, my nose, my hair, my voice. I'm special. No one can be found who has my handwriting. Nobody anywhere has my taste for food or music or art. No one sees things just as I do. In all of time, there has been no one who laughs like, no one who cries like me. And what makes me laugh and cry will never provoke identical laughter and tears from anybody else ever. No one reacts to any situation just as I would react. I'm special. I'm the only one in all of creation who has my set of abilities. Oh, there will always be somebody who is better at one of the things I'm good at, but no one in the universe can reach the quality of my combination of talents, ideas, abilities, and feelings. <clears throat> like a room full of musical instruments, some may excel alone, but none can match the symphony and sound when all are played together. <coughs> I'm a symphony. Through all of eternity, no one will ever look, talk, walk, think, or do like me. I'm special. I'm rare. And as in all rarity, there is great value. Because of my great rare value, I need not attempt to imitate others. I'll accept, yes, celebrate. My I'm special. And I'm beginning to realize it's no accident. Special. I'm beginning to see that God made me special for a very special purpose. He must have a job for me that no one else can do as well as I. Out of all the billions of applicants, only one is qualified. Only one has the right combination of takes. That one is because I'm special. <clears throat> You're special as well. And we're glad to have you. And we're just excited that you've joined us on today. Um, we've got some really good news from uh, our federal government that uh, there's enough vaccinations or will be uh, to vaccinate all adults in America. And so we're excited about that news. Uh, we're trying to get on the other side of this pandemic, this coronavirus. And so I admonish you when you get your opportunity to go and get vaccinated. Uh, I've already had both my Moderna vaccinations and uh, and I'm doing all right. I'm doing well. So I encourage you to do uh, to get your vaccinations when you get the opportunity. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Lazarus um, out of uh, chapter 11 of John. So before we go there, we're going to pray and ask God to direct us as we uh, engage his word again. Father, in the name that's above every name, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the good news about the new vaccinations and God, that there's going to be enough vaccinations to uh, cover the whole nation. God, I pray that you would just allow healing to take place in our land. Um, we, we thank you and we praise you because you are awesome, God, and you do all things well. So bless us, God, that we might be a blessing. And as we go into this study of Lazarus, God, help us to glean the truths that you have for us today in your word. And so, God, we're going to thank you in advance for what your word is going to accomplish because your word will never go out and come back void but it will accomplish that for which it was sent. So thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
So if you have your Bibles or uh, your uh, tablets, telephones, uh, turn with us to the Gospel of John, chapter 11. And I'm going to read uh, in the entirety this um, episode of uh, Jesus and Lazarus. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, Lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the light. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into this world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the city, the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? And some of them said, Could not this man 
who opened the eyes of the blind, also have kept this man from dying. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, Caiaphas being high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man for the people, and not that the whole nation should perish. Now this he did not say on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for that nation only, but also that he would gather together in one the children of God who were scattered abroad. Then from that day on they plotted to put him to death. Therefore Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and there remained with his disciples. And the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they sought Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it, that they might seize him. So that's the entire uh, 11th chapter of the book of John. And of course, it talks about Jesus raising Lazarus. It means God has helped. Okay? Lazarus. Lazarus means God has helped. Lazarus was one of the few friends of Jesus Christ who was mentioned by name in the Gospels. In fact, we're told that Jesus loved Lazarus and he also loved Mary and Martha. Lazarus must have uh, provided his house for his two sisters who lived with him. Um, they could have been widows, uh, but they were being uh, taken care of by their brother. And Jesus many times would go to the house of Lazarus for some R&R, &R, some rest and relaxation. Um, the hometown, Bethany, was a small village about two miles southeast of Jerusalem. And uh, Jesus would go there 
uh, to get away from the crowd. Jesus got an urgent message. And the message was, your friend Lazarus is sick. Now, I want to just stay here just for a moment because many times when people pray, they want the Lord to move right away and don't understand that the Lord has a purpose and he has a plan for everything. If he does not move, you think he ought to move. It's not because he hasn't heard your prayer. It's not because he's not some uh, in your situation. It just means that your time is not God's time. Your uh, wanting to, to, to make things happen uh, will only exacerbate your situation. What we need to do is wait on the Lord. We need to understand that when Jesus shows up, he's always on time. And so when Jesus got the message that Lazarus was sick, Jesus did not get in a hurry. As a matter of fact, he waited two days longer. Uh, Lazarus, in the meantime, died. Now, some people would have thought that, you know, there was no need for Jesus then to go to Bethany since Lazarus was already deceased. But Jesus told his disciples, we need to go see Lazarus because he sleeps. It's interesting that Jesus talks about death as sleep. And as a matter of fact, when a saint dies, he is sleeping. Why? Because when you go to sleep, you're going to get up. And since uh, we are uh, eternal beings uh, in this temporal world, the, the, the grave is not the end. It's only a means to and end. Now you've got to live throughout eternity somewhere. And the Lord says that he is going to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we might be also. But in this instance, he tells the disciples, uh, we, we need to go see Lazarus because he sleeps. Now when the disciples heard that Lazarus was sleeping, they said, well, if he sleeps, he doeth well. You know, because everybody needs some rest. You know, everybody needs to revitalize. You know, when we go to bed at night, uh, our hope is that, you know, we get a, a good night's sleep so we can be refreshed for uh, another day. You know, um, but Jesus waited until four days. Now, why did Jesus wait until four days? is very important in this story. There was a belief that if a person died, that the spirit of the person hovered over the grave for three days. So that it would be possible for a person's spirit to re-enter the body and for the person to revitalize in three days. Jesus waited until four days to take away every notion that Lazarus had the ability to come back. And so when the, when the four days came, Jesus said, let's go to Bethany. We got to go see Lazarus because Lazarus is dead. He goes to Bethany. And when he is on his way to the house, Martha, you all remember Martha. Martha was the cook. Uh, she could burn. And, uh, you know, you remember that there was a time when Martha was in the kitchen and Mary was at the foot of Jesus. And Martha told Jesus to tell Mary to come in and help her. Well, Martha ran down to where Jesus was. And she says something that we understand and we appreciate. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, I know many of you that are listening to me right now uh, have suffered loss. Uh, certainly, this coronavirus has 
claim the lives of over 500,000 people just in the United States. And many of you have had to grieve, uh, not even being able to say goodbye, not able to really have the kind of services that we've known in the past, and it has been difficult. But let me say to you that simply because things did not work out the way you think they ought, does not mean that Jesus was not there. As a matter of fact, he's always around. He is always in control. Um, we have to trust in him that he knows what's best. And so that I am the resurrection and the life. You know, when we read scripture, we got to believe. You know, I, I tell people all the time, before you open the Bible, you need to open your heart. Because if you open your heart before you open the Bible, God opens his mouth and he speaks to us. And we're able to receive what he says by faith. Faith is believing what you cannot see. And so Martha, he asked her, do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life, and give Martha credit. She was honest. She said, I believe that in the last day that I will see my brother because I believe that you are the resurrection and the life. Uh, but Jesus didn't ask her if she would see him in the future. Jesus' question was a present tense question. Do you believe that I am? the resurrection and the life. And uh, when Martha told Mary that Jesus was there, Mary gets in a hurry to come and, and talk to Jesus. You know, sometimes we really want to uh, make Jesus do what we want him to do. But we need to understand this, that Jesus is not our servant, we are his servants. And so we need to understand that he has a plan and he's going to work that plan and we've got to be in accord with the plan of the Lord. When Mary comes to see Jesus, the Bible says that, that Jesus groaned within himself. Um, he was moved because of the death of Lazarus and because of the grieving of Mary and Martha. Notice that Jesus wept. This is the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. I want us to understand this, that Jesus loves us and he cares. Uh, he cares about what you're going through. He cares about the storms that you're in. Everything that you and I face, he already faced. And so he appreciates that this journey is tough and tedious, and he will be right with us every step of the way. So Jesus asked them, where have you laid him? Can you see this processional as Jesus is walking toward the graveyard? And the people who were with Mary in the house are walking to the graveyard, not knowing what is about to transpire. Jesus tells them, he says, remove the stone. When you read the text, it's clear. Martha says, Lord, maybe we should not have moved this stone because by this time, he stinketh. In other words, uh, rigor mortis has set in and Maybe this is not, maybe it's better off to leave him the way he is. But Jesus didn't go to the cemetery to leave it the way it was. Oh my goodness, I, I've got to tell you something exciting. That every time we go to the graveyard, and sometimes we have to watch a loved one uh, leave. As a matter of fact, as a pastor, some of the most solemn words that I have to say is earth to earth, ashes to ashes, 
and dust to dust. But that's not the end. Because Jesus did something for us. And he's coming back for all of his children because he's prepared a place for us. Well, in this instance, in John chapter 11, he tells them, remove the stone. Now, why would Jesus tell them to remove the stone? This is very important. Jesus will never do what you can do. He has given you and I the ability to do certain things. And he expects us to do what we can do. So he tells them, you remove the stone. You can do that. And let me just say, because I'm a pastor, and I, you know, I can find a preaching moment in almost anything, that the church's responsibility is to remove stones out of people's way so that they can see Jesus. Okay, whatever impediment, whatever is blocking anybody from seeing Jesus, we need to help move the stone. But then after we move the stone, we need to step back because only Jesus can change a person's life. And so what does he do? After they remove the stone, Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. Now notice he had to be specific. Because remember now, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Had he just said, come forth, everybody in the graveyard would have got up. So Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And when he said that, Lazarus came out of the tomb. He had been tied with grave clothes. He even had a uh, handkerchief over his face. And Jesus tells them the second thing. He tells them, loose him and let him go. Okay? And whenever, well, just let me say this. If you're a fisherman, um, which I am not, but if you like to fish, I've never heard anybody catch a clean fish. You catch fish, you have to clean them. You have to scale them. You got to prepare them. Uh, for, you know, frying them and baking or whatever you're going to do to uh, cause dinner to happen. Well, anytime you, somebody comes out of the world and comes to the Lord, they need to be cleaned up as well. But the Lord is the one who can clean them up, but we as the church have to loose them and let them go. Why? Because the master has need of them. It's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. And so they loose him. And can you imagine the excitement of Mary and Martha when they see their brother Lazarus alive? How many of you all know that Jesus can do the impossible? What seems impossible to man is possible with God. And so we need to rest in the knowledge of knowing that the Lord is in charge and he knows what he's doing. Now, the story doesn't stop there. If you keep reading the chapter, what you're going to find is that some of the Jews who saw the miracle believed that Jesus was who he said he was. But the text is that some other Jews went to the Pharisees and the scribes and they told what had happened. You would think that everybody in the town would have been excited about what Jesus had done. Everybody wasn't excited. As a matter of fact, they started to plot and to scheme how they could take Jesus so that they could put him to death. But not only Jesus. Read the text real closely. It also says that they sought to kill Lazarus. Why did they want to kill Lazarus? He hadn't done anything wrong to them. But you see, Lazarus was evidence that Jesus was who he said he was. And so they, you know, they could reason and say, well, you know, we can refute what Jesus is saying 
But the people who saw Lazarus called back from the dead, that is evidence that Jesus is who he said he was. And we got to remove the evidence because we don't want to lose our following. We want to, don't want to lose our membership. It's a sad indictment when a congregation would rather get rid of the evidence of what Jesus can do rather than to be excited about Jesus delivering people who are in dead-like situations and bringing them back to life. And so Lazarus was proof. And you know what? To be proof that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. I'm not talking about our physical death now. I'm talking about our spiritual death. I'm talking about those of us who have been redeemed, those of us who have been washed. What we used to be. We ought to be a far cry from what we used to be because Jesus has changed our life. He's made us new. Second uh, Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when you're new, you don't have to tell people you're a Christian. Button big enough uh, that anybody can read it. You don't have to wear a cross big enough that you and them can be crucified on it together. <laughs> but, you know, you ought to just let your light shine. And if you just let your light shine. People will tell you, you're a Christian. Because there is evidence when a person has been brought from death to life. Out with the ways and I love Romans chapter 10. the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made known unto salvation. And then Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so I know that I am talking to people who once were dead, but the Lord has given you a new life. He's given you a new purpose. He's given you new direction. And because of that, because we are, are blessed, we need to be a blessing to those we come in contact with. So it's always exciting when we go to John chapter 11 and read about the physical resurrection of Lazarus. But understand this that the Lord is still in the resurrection business, not only in the physical sense, but also in the spiritual sense. And what a day of rejoicing it's going to be when we all get to heaven and we'll sing and shout the victory. I hope that you have uh, received information and inspiration from this uh, 11th chapter of the book of John as we have looked at uh, the resurrection of Lazarus. Jesus is real and he knows how to handle our situation. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We hope that you will join us again on next Wednesday when we will again peruse scripture and try to gain, gain knowledge of what God is saying to us in his word. God bless you. We'll see you next week.